A new jewel in Chicago's world-famous skyline is the vertical completion of the Healthcare Service Corporation headquarters building, overlooking magnificent Millennium Park. Our planning was very much long-term, so our site selection wanted to speak to that. And, and obviously, with, with this location being across from Millennium Park and the lakefront, there's a sense of permanency to it. And this location actually uh, helped facilitate the concept of vertical expansion. The reason for that is the three, three levels below upper street level. There's a grade level, intermediate level, and then a, ultimately a street level. And those three levels became vital in helping us figure, figuring out the logistics to safely um, expand the building. The original structure was 33 stories and accommodated 4,400 occupants. Now expanded to a height of 57 stories, the building accommodates approximately 8,000 occupants. Walsh Construction is the construction manager for its vertical completion and was the design builder of the original structure, which was completed in 1997. We had proposed an office building of a certain size to meet Blue Cross's then requirements. Uh, as the process evolved uh, and we began to look at other significant issues for Blue Cross, one of which was their future potential expansion. There was a site for sale at the time uh, immediately east of the existing building, but as we explored that and looked at the cost of capital and the cost of holding that piece of land for an indefinite period of time, it was not clear when Blue Cross would need the expansion requirements, uh, frankly, if ever. So the cost of banking that land became uh, pretty prohibitive. And we, then we began to look at how else could we satisfy the expansion needs of Blue Cross. And that evolved into the concept of vertical expandability. We wanted flexibility. It's really vertical flexibility versus horizontal flexibility to expand. And, and part of that is to design a building that's that's both for single use, single tenant, and multi-tenant, which we did. And we knew that there would be a market, especially in this location, to potentially lease up space, whether it's short term or long term. And that allowed us actually to make a good sound uh, judgment on pulling the trigger for the second phase. Designed by James Getch, now of Getch Partners, Walsh managed all aspects of the original building's design and construction including value engineering services to assist in achieving all of the owner's architectural design objectives. We were working closely with the Walsh Construction Company in particular in terms of conceptualizing, pricing, and uh, planning for the building from the very beginning. It, this is a little bit different than a normal project where an architect may work for six or nine months and then eventually the drawings go to the contractor, it's priced and so forth. In this case we were working with Walsh from the very beginning, from the very concept to the idea of vertical expansion. Future vertical expansion was fully factored into the original construction, with accommodations built into the foundation and superstructure, into various mechanical systems, and into the vertical transportation system to enable the future growth of the building. The vertical completion project was accomplished by adding 24 stories to the existing 33-story structure. While modest vertical expansions are fairly common, a 24-floor expansion over an occupied building is extremely rare and the first of its kind in the city of Chicago. Such a project required an expansion logistics plan to accomplish the vertical completion while preserving public and employee safety and security, minimizing the impact of construction on employees, visitors, neighbors, and the public, and maximizing building efficiency and cost effectiveness. Central to this logistics plan was the placement of the two tower cranes. The process by which we selected and, and then ultimately placed the, uh, the, the tower cranes on top of the roof was a, uh, was a very detailed process that we went through. The erection of the tower cranes was unique in that they were not anchored and supported on the ground as they are typically, but instead placed 30 stories up on the roof of the existing 33-story HCSC structure. The real detail fought and planning had to go into how the actual tower cranes were erected because they had to be erected from something that we, we needed to bring up from the freight elevator. And in this case, it was a 17-ton derrick that we had broken down into small pieces. Individual sections of a 17-ton derrick crane were transported to the rooftop by a service elevator. The 17-ton derrick was used to assemble a structural steel platform on which the 17-ton derrick then assembled a 35-ton derrick, which then assembled the first tower crane. This tower crane was utilized to move the 35-ton derrick and to assist in erecting the balance of the steel platform and the second tower crane. 
The cranes were dismantled in the reverse order in which they were erected, after having self-climbed down to the top of the vertical expansion. We again had to go through this very intricate ballet of, of bringing up a, uh, and assembling a 35-ton derrick up on the roof, using it to, uh, to take apart then the, uh, the West Tower crane, uh, and then ultimately that 35-ton that derrick was, uh, was taken down by utilizing the 17-ton derrick, which you actually still see today that we're using for some, uh, some, some final hoisting associated with the, uh, the completion of the, the screen wall up on the roof. With the positioning of the tower cranes established, two primary areas were protected at street level to allow for safe hoisting operations. The first area on Randolph Street was adjacent to the main building entrance. Over this building entrance, an architecturally treated canopy was constructed to maintain the welcoming feel of the building. At the second area on Columbus Drive, a street closure was arranged and incorporated a simpler canopy with a more utilitarian treatment. Both hoisting locations operated with the appropriate positioning of flagmen in the street. At the Randolph Street entrance, Walsh Labor combined their flagmen with building security personnel to control pedestrian traffic. We've had a team approach from day one and really even long before day one, we knew that we'd have to have a, have a real team approach to this to achieve what is the most important thing uh, in this job and that is to secure, to make sure that the people that work here, both the tradesmen, the people that are doing the construction and the people underneath this construction site are safe and secure for the entire time. Ready mix concrete was delivered to the lowest level of the site, just outside the building's truck dock. The concrete was pumped through a vertical riser inside the building's freight elevator lobby to the top of the new tower. Since not disturbing the occupants of the building was a top priority, vibration isolators were placed between the vertical concrete riser and the structure at each existing floor. This riser, along with the spray-on fireproofing riser, were then insulated and enclosed to minimize airborne noise transmission. To facilitate the movement of hundreds of construction personnel and thousands of tons of material and equipment, a personnel material hoist was erected inside the building in an open atrium, with its base just below the 30th floor. Walsh came up with a very unique idea, uh, and that involved putting the skip hoist inside the building on top of one of the existing elevator shafts. So we worked with them to develop a platform in un underneath the uh, skip hoist that serves as its uh, elevator pit, if you will, and then the skip hoist traveled up and down above that, and that saved the project from having to remove sections of the curtain wall to anchor uh, a skip hoist on the exterior of the building. It also made it possible for us to be moving men and materials without the occupants of the building uh, being disturbed. So that, that was a, uh, a really, really great idea that came forward. There were unique logistical challenges in constructing a brand new vertical transportation system for the future occupants of the HCSC vertical completion, as well as in the extension of the three existing freight cars, which would now serve every one of the final 57 floors of the expanded building. When you look at the project and you think of adding 24 floors on top of an existing building, it's actually much more than that because from an elevatoring perspective, it's 54 floors of new elevator construction that have to go in and a good portion of that had to go in an existing building while the, while the building's uh, occupied and functioning. So the elevatoring uh, planning and construction was, was very involved, very unique. Work on the open atria itself above level 30 was accomplished utilizing a combination of swing stages, mobile platforms, and more traditional full height scaffolding that extended up as many as 10 stories. The unique opportunity here was a, a high-rise building designed for a single tenant. And one of the things that we wanted to do with this building was to put the elevators in an open shaft so that you looked up in that atrium, you could sense that this was the whole organization. And when you see the elevators going up and down, it's almost like the pulse of the building. You can feel, you know, the feel that the building is functioning. Once the vertical completion structural steel was topped out, Walsh replaced the 24 cooling towers at the roof of the original structure with 11 larger cooling towers at the roof of the vertical completion. One of the major considerations from the beginning was the whole idea of the Unicom plant and the uh, cooling towers at the top of the building. 
And one of the benefits of the Unicom uh, facility, the district cooling, where there were a number of plants that were interconnected, allowed us to disconnect Blue Cross from the district distribution of chilled water and then build the cooling towers on top and then reconnect it. Three floors were left open just above the existing cooling towers, from level 30 to level 32. This space needed to remain open while the expansion took place above to allow the original cooling towers to continue operating efficiently. When the vertical expansion was completed and the existing cooling towers dismantled, iron workers proceeded to install curtain wall on these floors. One of the more difficult challenges of this project was marrying a, uh, you know, a new curtain wall system onto the existing system here. Uh, you know, we hired a firm uh, by the name of Firmus Delisa to, uh, to design and then erect the, uh, the curtain wall for us. Despite the use of the two systems, the final result gives the appearance of a seamless, aesthetically consistent curtain wall system across all 57 stories. One of the critical decisions that we made during the early days was with respect to the curtain wall and the materials, and having to be certain that there were materials that would uh, not weather and would withstand 10 years of exposure and then still be added to and, and match seamlessly. The vertical completion of the Healthcare Service Corporation headquarters is a historic project, which presented unique challenges in preserving public and employee safety while constructing over an occupied and fully functioning building. To do something this complex takes a great deal of focus, a great deal of focus, almost relentless focus on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we are in our 38th month of this 43-month project. And as we get closer to the finish line, although I don't want to let any, any of the team members know the soft part of me, <laughs> I have to say that um, I can't be any more proud to work with uh, Walsh, to work with Getch Partners, John Buck, all the sub-engineers, and all the contractors in the city. I mean, what an unbelievable development in this city, in this location, and the plan worked great. I think we're all used to this world of where, you know, within organizations, people come and people go. And over the 14-year period of this project, Andy Peeney has been the leader of the project from the beginning. Matt Walsh has been the leader of the project from the construction side from the beginning, and I had the good fortune to uh, be here at the same time. So uh, just to have that kind of continuity, not just within one organization, but within three organizations at this point in time, I think is actually quite unique. Having spent 15 years of my career uh, working with the Blue Cross team, with Andy and Jim uh, and uh, the John Buck people, uh, this is certainly amongst the greatest achievements I've had, and, and I'm deeply honored to have been blessed by uh, Blue Cross and its officials in awarding Walsh Construction not only the first phase of this project, but the second phase. It's been an honor uh, and a tremendous privilege in my life and my career to be able to be associated with them and, uh, and their company and this fantastic project. Walsh Construction is committed to setting the highest standards for safety in the industry with a mission that no one gets hurt. Walsh's mission is also to be the builder of choice for its customers. That was accomplished for the Healthcare Service Corporation by building for them, as Walsh has for others, another great architectural landmark in the city of Chicago. You know, when I think about the number of projects that Walsh has built, you know, just in this vicinity, here on Lakeshore East, you have the, the Shoreham and the Tides, uh, two residential towers, but then you look at uh, other residential towers, the, the Heritage of Millennium Park, uh, the legacy that, that's, that's currently under construction. But then you look at uh, you know, the work we've done in Millennium Park itself with the uh, you know, work on the parking structure, the Gary Banshell, uh, Monroe Gardens, and then going to Museum Campus where we've, uh, we just finished a, a substantial project at the, uh, the Shedd Aquarium for the Oceanarium. Uh, and then look at Lakeshore Drive itself and the you know, project that I personally worked on, uh, the relocation of, uh, of Lakeshore Drive from the east side of Soldiers Field to the west side. So this project fits with what is a, uh, just a, a number of Walsh success stories here downtown on Chicago's lakefront.